a tree. Okay, so today is 11 20, 15. So that phylogenetic tree shows how things are related. And we could do this, and it shows where your common ancestors are. The last point when you had an ancestor in common is where those little lines split off. So we could do this for you and your siblings. We could build a phylogenetic. Um, Anybody here have more than three siblings? I love big families. Awesome. Okay. You got a host of siblings? Good. Four? Five. five. Excellent. So it's you plus five, or there are five total? Five total. Five total. Okay. Yes? You know what? Let's, let's go. That's more complicated to draw. <laughs> Let me go with the simple one first. <laughs> when we get into pedigrees, we're going to use that. Because I, I like complicated pedigrees because we like try to show every single possible setup we could have. And so we'll use that a lot. Huh? Okay, and that's for pedigrees, that's awesome. I love the complicated ones for pedigrees. Yes? Oh, okay, so you're complicated too. Let's, let's make up a family, okay? <laughs> let's, just, let's just make up a family. So let's say we have... Um, three individuals who all have a common ancestor. Well, let's just start off with two, shall we? So these two have a common ancestor one generation apart. They're siblings. Um, if these two were siblings, and then we have, you know, so here's person one, person two, person three, person four. Person one and two share a common ancestor, one parent. Person three and four share a common ancestor, one parent. But these two parent, these two are siblings. They share a common ancestor. One, two, three, and four are cousins. No, 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 no. So. One, two, three, and four have a common ancestor two generations back. Now, it's not always so easy to say neatly. You know, if we're talking about something that happened 100,000 years in the past, can we identify individual generations? Probably not. You know, we can get a rough idea of how long ago a common ancestor existed, but we can start to build a phylogenetic tree just by looking at physical characteristics. So I'm going to hand you a packet here real quick. Um, this activity shows how phylogenetic trees are constructed using morphological characteristics of organisms. What's morphology, do you know? Does it mean if you morph, you change shape? Morphology is how things are shaped. That's all it is. Um, so when we said like humans have two arms, two legs, one head, that's a morphological description. That's how we're shaped. Okay, it's an introduction to systemics that classify organisms according to evolutionary relatedness. So we're going to classify some things based on how similar they are. And we're going to walk through an example together first. If you flip to this second page, you have a picture of some beetles. So we've gone through this sort of list of characteristics. And, of course, my picture got cut off. Let me take a better one. And we're going to start finding the things that have the fewest differences. So how are you going to do this? You can do this a lot of different ways. One way is to color code things that they have in common. So I'm going to circle in red everything that has two things in common. So A and B are both oval. They're both yellow. Nope, they're different with the white and black. They both don't have antenna. They both have visible jaws. They both have spots, and they both, both have black spots. They have most features in common. The only difference between them is their head color. They're pretty darn similar. So we would say A and B, and this is shown down in the lower whoops, part, um, a and B only have one difference. Oh, and of course those don't go with me. Of course not.
there. Perfect. Okay, so A and B only have one difference. And if you look at the chart down here, using that table, we're going to start to compare how many differences things have. So A and B have one difference between them. So let's look at B and C. B and C, round and oval, yellow and orange. Okay, B and C both have um, a black head. Both, both don't have antenna. Both have visible jaws. Both have spots. And both have black spots. So B and C have two differences. And if we look at this chart, B and C have two differences. So what if we look at C and D? Round and oval, orange and pink, black and white, antenna, no, yes, jaws, yes, no, spots, yes, no, black, spots, black versus none. They have nothing in common. Okay, C and D have nothing in common. D and E, oval round, pink, pink. Okay, so they have that in common. They're both pink. Um, Head color, white and black. Do they have antenna? They both have antenna. Um, let's see. Do they... D and E. Neither of them have spots. So they have... Oh, I'm sorry. Jaws visible? No. Okay. So they have one, two, three, four, five things in common. I'm sorry, they had. I'm sorry, we're looking at differences. So they have one, two differences also. This is D and E. So if we look at D and E, they have two differences. So we're starting to compare how many differences there are between these species. If you go to the next page, and I'll tell you what, you're going to work with a partner on this. So what I would suggest is push two desks together, and then you can flip it so that you can see both of these pages simultaneously. One of you flip to this page, one flip to this page. Okay, so you've found those that have the fewest differences. Those are the things that are most closely related. And you can do this on your iPad. I would suggest that you do it in Doceri, start a new pro, or you can do it your, as part of your notes. Um, you're going to draw this, so Doceri is a good fit. Which two pairs are most closely related? Which pairs only have one difference between them? A and B is one of them. What's the other one? C and F. Okay. So you're going to make a dot and label it A and a dot and label it B. And those two organisms are very closely related. They have a shared ancestor at some point in the pretty near distant past. Same thing for C and F. C and F have one difference. They have a shared ancestor pretty close in the past. So we have two that are sort of left over, D and E. Um, They're, they're, yeah, they're sort of a different organism. Let's look at where do we have two differences. So D and E, and we also have two differences between B and C. So we know that at some point in the past, B and C shared a common ancestor. And it was, a, it was longer ago than A and B or C and F. And D and E also have a common ancestor about that long ago because they had two differences as well. Now, we haven't talked about all the things that all these things, all these organisms have in common. They all have shells. 
they're all, we're assuming they're all insects. They're pictured, they look like beetles. So they probably all have six legs. Um, they all have what are called ventricles. So, you know, we talked about like body plans, mammals and prim primates and mammals and a lot of animals all have a nose. They have some opening on the face or the head that allows air in to go into the lungs. Insects don't have that. They have what are called ventricles. So if you imagine that you had a hole, I see the gum spit it out. If you had a whole little series of holes down the side of your body, and that's where air came in and exited and entered your body, that's what insects have. So like these guys all have ventricles, they all have um, a hard shell, they all have wings, they all have six legs. So we know they all have a common ancestor, so we can connect them back to a distant common ancestor. That's a really primitive phylogenetic tree. What you've just done is a phylogenetic tree. Now what I'm going to give you is each pair of you is going to get a set of six organisms to work with. And you can't keep these because I need them for the other class. On this page in your packet, you are going to start listing characteristics that they have. Okay? That top row is going to be characteristics that they have. And you're going to list what's present for each of those organisms. So we're going to start the process. We will obviously be finishing this on Monday. We're not going to finish this today. But I want you to get through listing all of the traits, and I want you to get through who has what. So I'm going to pass those out, and we'll get started. So if we look at these flowers, we can look at the number of petals they have. That might be one of our categories. We can look at the color of the center of the petal. We can look at if they have thorns or not. We can look at if they have jagged leaves or smooth leaves. That one kind of got cut off. Um, we can look at the shape of the petal. Those are all characteristics that we could list. And then start to, to list, okay, for species A has five petals and jagged leaves and no thorns and a yellow center. Okay. For the butterflies... Some of the characteristics that we could start to list. Nope. You know, we could list the color of the center part of the body. Is it black or gray? We could list, do they have, these are called eye spots. Do they have eye spots? How many eye spots do they have? Two, four, or none. What color are the eye spots? Do they have this little stripe along the edge of the wing? Those little spots on the wing? You don't have them. You have flowers, not butterflies. I'm doing some examples for each. Um, do they have long antenna or short antenna? Do they have, these are called swallow tails. Do they have tails on their wings? Those are all characteristics that you could list. For the birds, and these are actually all um, pipers. So for the little piper birds, what are some of the characteristics you can look at? What are some of the characteristics you can look at for the pipers? Um, long bill or short bill? Long beak, pardon? Spots. Do they have them? What color are they? Some of the spots are different colors. What color are their wings? Um, yeah, long legs or short legs. What color are their legs? How long is their tail? Those are all characteristics that you can list. So I'm going to let you start building your chart, and you may want to like sort of scribble on the margins first, and then you'll do your final copy. And you're going to start comparing your organisms. Okay. So once you've got your little data table, um, this drawn. Start by drawing things that only have one difference between them. Those you know are very closely related. Now, it gets really challenging, and, and the butterflies seem to be really, there are a lot that have two differences. Is that true? 
Okay. Um, when you have a lot that have two differences, we're going to have to figure this out. This is the first year we've done this particular exercise, and there is no key for it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always fun. So I'm figuring this out with you. I'm trying to figure out how to draw a phylogenetic tree where there are just two branches. Question? Question. Okay, hold, hold on, and I'll be right with you. Um, if you finished your data matrix with the number of differences between your species, start trying to draw the phylogenetic tree. I want you, on the page that has your species on it, somewhere down in the corner in pencil, write your names so that you get the same one back on Monday, because I am collecting those. You get to keep your packet. Keep it in your binder. We'll finish constructing phylogenetic trees on Monday, so you'll need to have your packet with you. I get to keep the species.